Five years ago, I made the worst decision of my life. Just kidding, that was a joke. In 2017, I decided to pursue game development. It's honestly crazy thinking about how long it's been, but I think it's finally time to see how far I've come. The very first thing I did was download Unity. Back then, there weren't nearly as many tutorials as there are nowadays, but thankfully, Brackies was making videos. The absolute first project I ever worked on was following a Mega Man platformer tutorial. It wasn't even a game, and all I can remember was trying to wrap my head around sprite sheets. But that very same year, I was starting my first year in university where I'd be studying game development. The first game my group and I made was this text-based version of a Mario Bros arcade game. It was written in C++ and was honestly a great start to getting familiar with game programming. The second game we made in our first year was called The Shadows Game. The game was created in an engine we wrote from scratch using Coco's 2DX. It's a puzzle platformer where you need to use your shadow to help you progress in the game. I remember how excited we were when we finished this game. This was our first big project and it was a major success for everyone. My second year was a lot more programming intensive. We had these graphics courses that made us program 3D engines completely from scratch. My group and I also worked on a game engine together, and this is where we created my favorite game from university. Basketballers is a fighting game where you need to hit the enemy into the net. Back then, I didn't have as big of a role as a programmer, and I was mostly focused on modeling and animations. At the time, I wasn't good at either, but learning how to model was extremely important because nowadays, I've mostly been working on 3D games. In my third and fourth year, this is where I really started working more with Unity, and I also started looking into Unreal Engine. This is the year where I felt like I made the most progress in programming. Our third year university project was to make a 3D game in Unity, which combined parkour and dodgeball. But during that year, COVID struck and it became really hard to work on the game together. During that time though, I started working on a bunch of different side projects. I wanted to go back to the basics, so I tried to create this weird puzzle platformer where you could adjust the direction of gravity based on how you turned your screen. But this, like many, went unfinished. Even though I didn't finish it, I was able to make this game without having to rely on tutorials or have to search for code samples, which was a huge step in the right direction for me. My first big project in Unreal Engine was this Tron game. I loved the aesthetics from the movies and I really wanted to turn it into a game. This was my first real step into online multiplayer games and it taught me a huge lesson on making sure you plan for networking early on in your game because it will save you a ton of time in the future. Unfortunately, like my other game, this one also went unfinished. It's not like these two games were extremely complicated, but the problem I suffered from was being too excited about new ideas. Sometimes I'd get bored of one project and be more interested in working on something else, which is something I still deal with today. So instead of trying to create full games, I decided to just focus on programming different mechanics that I was interested in at the time. For instance, this game was me experimenting with AI. I learned how to program vehicles in Unreal Engine, and also create this traffic system where the AI reacts to the signal lights. During this time, I was playing a lot of GTA, so I wanted to recreate some of the ragdolling that would happen when a car hit a pedestrian. And of course, there needed to be some basic combat. I wanted to work more on multiplayer projects, so I decided to implement some mechanics which would require some networking. I wanted the game to be fully persistent, meaning it saved player information to a database, and on startup, the player would be able to access that character and begin playing. The game featured things like messaging, which is a pretty basic feature for most multiplayer games. One of the bigger features was the inventory system. This was by far the most challenging thing I've ever programmed. Figuring out how to network this was insanely difficult, but also making it work with the user interface was torturous. Then having to make it save to the database was a completely different challenge, but the fact that I was able to get it done was extremely satisfying. This was also the first time I've ever programmed shooting mechanics. This part was a lot easier in comparison to the inventory system, but getting the shooting to feel right took a bit of time. It gave me a bigger appreciation for what games like Call of Duty and Escape from Tarkov do. But of course, I didn't just do game development throughout these years. In both Unity and Unreal Engine, there's a lot more that you can do than just making games. For instance, I worked on this program in Unity where depending on your location, it could change the color of your Philips Hue lights. Then I dove into some augmented reality. I first made this augmented reality project where you could have a pet dog. It used voice controls to give commands to the dog, but Unreal Engine's augmented reality support was pretty terrible, so I moved on to Unity's. Funnily enough, this project actually helped me land a job with my school for an augmented reality app. The project itself was really simple. It used image detection to select which model would be spawned in, and then you'd be able to inspect the model in augmented reality. 
I guess not many people in my program had experience with AR, so I was pretty lucky in this case. At this point, I felt really comfortable with programming and using both Unity and Unreal Engine. So I needed to start working on a portfolio so that I'd eventually be able to get a job in game development. I wanted my portfolio to stand out a bit, so I created both a website and also a gamified version of my portfolio. This allowed me to showcase my experience in a unique way. It's nothing crazy and it has some pretty basic mechanics, but it's still a work in progress and I'm pretty happy with how it's turned out. And now that brings us to this past year. Five years ago, I wouldn't have expected myself to be making YouTube videos about game development, but over this past month, I've been having a ton of fun making these videos and games. It's given me a newfound passion for game development. This Minecraft clone that I made was super fun, and it allowed me to explore a topic that I've always been interested in, which is procedural generation. Usually, I would have just made these projects for myself, and no one else would have ever seen it. But now that I'm posting on YouTube, I can share it all of it with you guys. It's also given me a reason to actually finish these games. Once I started making these videos, I felt more motivation to getting the project done so that I could make a video about it, which is a huge plus. But even after all these years, I still enjoy working on these small projects like this typing game I made. This game was ridiculously easy to make. In fact, I made it within an hour. But like I mentioned before, just the feeling of finishing a game is extremely satisfying. And I highly recommend you guys work on projects like these. This rage game I made was one of the most unique games I've ever made. It uses your voice to control the wheel and it also follows the masochist style of games popularized by Bennett Foddy. This is exactly the type of game that I would usually give up on after a bit due to how difficult it is to design the level, but since it was for a video, I felt more inclined to finishing it. The most recent video I made was making my very first mobile game. This is something I've been planning on doing for such a long time, but was finally motivated enough to doing. The idea itself is inspired by other simple, casual games on the App Store, like Flappy Bird, Stack, and many more. All you need to do in this game is hop to the next tile. I know, I know, super difficult. What's crazy to me is that a game like this would have felt super impossible five years ago, and now I can make these types of games within the day. I'm making this video to show you guys that although it takes some time, you'll be able to do the things that I'm doing eventually. All you need to do is take that first step and download that game engine. Don't feel pressured into thinking your game is too simple, because sometimes the most simplest games can become the most popular, and they're also what's going to help you move on to the bigger games. It's projects like this that help you get to this. So don't be discouraged. Make something that you think is fun, and at the very least, you'll be growing as a game developer. Making this video has been super fun for me because it allowed me to visualize all the progress I've made in the past five years, and I highly recommend you guys document the games and the progress you're making as well. As always, if you enjoyed, please be sure to like the video and subscribe. I have a ton of projects in mind and I'm excited to share it with you all. Peace.